In this video, we're going to learn about the list data type in detail. So let's start a new file and let's rename it into simply list.ipython-notebook. So list we have seen many times before in this course. So now let's look at the details. So first of all, you remember that to create a list, we are going to use, or one way to create a list is to um, use the so-called literal notation with the brackets and uh, put the elements of the list uh, in between the brackets. So if you want to create a list that is initially empty, the way to do that is to simply write open closing brackets and that will already create a list object that has no elements in there. And also, as we have seen in the video, who am I and how many, um, is that list objects are mutable. That means creating an initially empty list is quite useful sometimes because you can still put in elements uh, after you created it. So let's um, assign um, this empty list to a variable that we simply call empty. Okay, so empty is uh, simply the empty list. Okay, let's do another example. So let's um, take, um, let's call the list simple because it's going to be a simple list and we are going to see what, uh, what I mean by, by simple and non-simple um, uh, in a bit. So let's create a list that simply holds two numbers. Let's say 40 and 50, okay? So let's create the list and the simple list now has two numbers in it. So this is how um, the list syntax works. And now let's uh, do one more step and let's see how far we can go with this, uh, with this um, syntax. So what we could do is we could go ahead and we could um, create a new list and the list now has as its element first a reference to the empty list, okay? So what we learn from that is that I can use variables as an element when I create a list. So sometimes this is um, yeah, useful to know. So then let's go ahead. After we put in the empty list there, let's put in there um, the number 10 as the second element, as an integer. Next, let's put in the list the number 20 as a floating point number here. Then let's go ahead and have uh, another number. Let's put in there the number 30, but now modeled as a string object, so as a text string. And let's end the list by putting another reference to a list in there, namely the simple list. So this is going to work, as we see. This is going to create a list object with the uh, mentioned elements in the list. Now, what is so special about this list? Well, I'm using this example to illustrate some points. The, the main point that you should take away from this is that they, don't con that they don't contain the elements themselves, they only contain references to the elements. And uh, in this example, because we have a list that contains a list that contains elements, we also say that the data here is nested. And nested data is um, a term that we use to um, indicate that we have um, basically a collection inside a collection. So something inside something, inside something maybe, and you can do that a couple of times before you get to the final uh, elements that you actually care about. We could use that um, you know, nesting strategy to, for example, model a matrix. A matrix is simply um, a list of vectors if you want, right? It could be a list of row vectors or a list of column vectors, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, a matrix is just a two-dimensional list in a way but we will uh, learn about the details quite in a bit. So now that I have given you some examples, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, draw you a memory diagram on how uh, this looks uh, like in memory. So first um, we created the empty list and the empty list is simply created uh, in the following way. We are going to create a list object and we have already learned that list objects are these long so-called arrays, but the term array is in Python used for something else. And they have fields in it that have the same uh, space in between. So in other words, they can hold the same uh, number of bits um, in each field. And all, the f and all these fields hold are references. However, this first list is going to be empty, so there are no references inside this list. So um, this list has a name, we call it empty. And so let's put the empty uh, name here with the reference to the list. Then we went ahead and we created another list. So let's simply do that just like this. We create another list here with a couple of empty fields. And the exact number doesn't matter. It's a so-called implementation detail. 
but you can already guess that Python already puts in a little bit more fields so that you have uh, some space to work with. So let's say if you create an initially empty list and you want to later on put something in, you don't have to create a new list object. You can simply use it and use the fields that are already there. Now in this uh, second list object, we put in the numbers 40 and 50. And this is going to look like this. We first have the number 40 as an integer. And also we have the number 50 as an integer. And now comes into play what I just told you, that lists are just containers holding references to other objects. Okay, so that is how we model that. And now this list has a name, we call it simple. So the simple list um, simply looks like that. Okay, now comes the third example, um, which is uh, a list as well. So let's uh, put in space for the list, same number of fields. But again, it, the exact number doesn't really matter. So this is a list. And now we learned that the first element was a reference to the empty list, right? So this is what we see uh, in the example code uh, right here. The first reference is, uh, or the first element is a reference to the empty list. So what should we do here? Well, it's quite simple actually. So all we do is we put in a reference that goes up here and simply points at the other list. That's it. So we are not holding any particular data here. The only thing we are holding is a reference to another list that may hold data, that may hold references to the actual element. The second um, element here was the number 10. So let's maybe put it right here, number 10 as an integer. And let's put a reference right here. The reason why I put it here is just to indicate that Python chooses for us where to put all the elements in memory. We have nothing to do with that. Uh, so in other words, um, this is also one of the reasons why Python is such an easy language because for a beginner especially, because we don't have to deal with where to put something in memory. Python does that for us. The second, uh, the third element, sorry, was the floating point number 20.0. So let's write 20.0 and let's make this box a little bit bigger than the others because it's a floating point number. Just to illustrate that um, we have different data here and let's simply put a reference right here. Okay, so the next element um, we said is going to be a string. So an object like this, which says the words 30. And this is a string. So this is going to be right here. And now the fifth element is really a reference to the other list up here. So we could do it like this maybe. So this is what, um, this uh, looks like in memory. And then we gave a name to this list down here and we called it nested to introduce the idea of a so-called nested data structure. So now here in this diagram, we can already see what, where the name nested comes from. So we have a list, but the list does not contain only data, but it also contains references, um, in particular this reference here to the simple list that then contains further references to the actual data objects that the numbers here. And whenever we have a structure where we have a reference going to some object that itself holds references to other object that itself holds reference to other object, that is what we mean by saying nest, nested data, okay? There will be an exercise uh, in, the, in the future uh, later on um, in uh, chapter uh, nine, I guess, um, where we work or where you as a student work with nested data structures but uh, you will uh, until then learn about another data type, the so-called uh, dictionary data type to make the uh, exercise a bit nicer. But um, so far, this is already enough to model um, nested data here. Okay, and there is no one kind of nested data. Nested simply refers to the idea that we have references following references following references and so on. Okay, so one other thing to remember is, and uh, let's continue that um, here in the slides. So. Another thing to remember is we can, uh, of course, because lists are sequences, as we saw in the previous video, they fulfill all the, uh, all the four properties that every sequence has. So let's look at these um, properties. So let's first look at the um, container property. Let's simply go ahead and ask, is the number zero in the nested list? And we get back false. So this indicates that the in operator works. So in other words, lists are containers, just to as a little review. 
Um, the second property is the length um, of a list, so um, the, the size property. So we are going to call the length function. And now I'm going to um, pass in a reference to the nested list. And now we get back the number five, right? But now if we look at the, uh, vi uh, at the, uh, the representation of the list here under cell eight, what we see is if we count the elements inside, um, some people may be confused because we could count like this, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so the last list, the last inner list here contains two elements. So some people may say, okay, this list should have a length of six, right? However, the length is five. Now, why is the length of the list five? Well, the length is defined to be the number of references a list holds. So here we have one, two, three, four, five references. Even though the last reference is a list with two references, th these two references do not count towards the length of this list here. Only the references that are right here in this list object count toward the length of this container. So this is why we see the number five here. This is the second uh, sequence property. The third one is quite simple. We can loop over it. So we could say for element in nested. And uh, just to illustrate another point, we are not going to print out the element, but we are going to print out the type of the element. And we see that we have different data types that are stored in the same list. And this is maybe something new for those people of you that have uh, experience with some other programming languages. In many programming languages, the list-like data type um, only allows you to um, model um, ho homogeneous data. So all elements must have the same data type. Here, we see that the, the, the Python list data type allows us to model heterogeneous data. So in other words, every element can have, can have the same uh, data type, but they can also have different data types. And in this example, we see that the elements do have different data types, okay? So um, in Python, there is another uh, data type called the array, um, especially the NumPy array, the third party package NumPy that we have also seen briefly before, that um, also provides the array data type that is very much like the list data type, but that only models homogeneous data. So um, this also exists in the Python world, but lists are um, not there for homogeneous data. They are typically there to you know, contain simply references to whatever we want. However, in real programs, in real life programs, um, it is often um, not really beneficial to have a list with he heterogeneous data. So, because usually when, when you model something in a program with a list, then usually what you want to do is you want to process all the elements in the list. And so that means that all the elements in the list have to support the same operations. And uh, usually the best way to, to ensure that is to simply have a list with um, object of the same data type, because then you can do the same operation for every element in the list. However, we are not forced to do that. So that is the third um, property um, of a sequence. And the fourth one was the ordered property. So let's go ahead and simply say reverse. So that's the reverse built in, that's passed to it, maybe the simple list now. And we get back something that is called a, li a, re a list reverse iterator. What an iterator is, we will learn in chapter eight. But for now, the short version is an iterator is simply a rule that knows how to calculate the next element without having calculated without having calculated it yet, okay? So it's like, uh, this is um, a so-called a postponed operation or something that will happen in the future maybe, but it has not happened um, as of now. So I'm using this here to show you another way of how to construct lists. Um, and the other way is uh, to simply use the list constructor. So if I pass the reverse iterator to the list constructor here, I get back a list with the numbers 50 and 40. So it's the same uh, element as above, just in reverse order. The list constructor can also be used, for example, um, with um, a string, okay? So let me go ahead and let's say maybe say um, lorem ipsum, that should already be enough. And if I execute that, what I get back is a list where each element is a one character string, okay? So why is that? Well, let's look at that. So let's go into the Python docs, library reference, built-in functions. And now let's look at the, um, at the description of the, or the documentation for the list constructor here. So let's go here. And we see that the list constructor takes one parameter as its input and it's called iterable. 
and now with this video and the previous video we know what that is it's any element or any object over which you can loop and uh, the string object itself is uh, can be iterate can be iterated over and we have seen also in many previous videos when we loop over a string we are going to loop over the characters one by one therefore the individual element over which we loop is the individual character this is why we get back uh, a list with individual uh, or with a single character strings okay this is maybe confusing to some of you but the reason is simply because the list constructor takes any iterable and makes a list where each element in the new list is an element drawn from the iterable over which we can loop okay okay so these are the four list properties and now um, to finish this video is um, also um, by uh, referring to what we saw with the string data type when we also talked about these four properties um, in, in the relationship of the string data type. Now we have these four properties, so what can we do with it? Well, they ensure that we can do, for example, indexing. So if you go ahead and I say, I take the nested list, and let's say I index into the list using the indexing operator, which also happens to be um, the brackets operator. And let's say I want to um, access the first element. I can simply do so by uh, using index zero and I get back a reference to the empty list, okay? And um, of course, because of the second property, uh, because of the uh, yeah the second property, which is the size property, we know that there must be an end, so there must be um, a highest possible index, and therefore, um, what we can do is we can also go the other way because if we know to begin with that there has to be an end, that means we can also go backwards from the end, and indexing backwards, we have seen before when we talked about strings we can do with the ne index negative one. So negative one will be the first element going from right to left and index zero will be the first element going from left to right here. Okay, so um, this is indexing. Maybe let's uh, give it a nice header here. And now let's also generalize that. We saw how that works um, before also um, when we talked about the string data type and the generalization of indexing is simply slicing. So slicing means we not only get one element out of a sequence, but we get many elements. So let's go ahead and um, get from the uh, nested list here, let's get the two elements 10 and 20 and maybe also 30. So how can we do that? Well, the way to do that is by using the indexing operator. And now instead of putting the one index in there, we are going to put um, the first index or the index of the first element we want, which is index one for the second uh, element. And then we put a colon there. And then we are simply going to put, in this case, the number four, why four? Well, the right index is the first index that is not included. The left index is always included. We want three elements, so the three numbers in the middle. And um, by saying we'll go from one to four, that means we're going from one including to four excluding, which is exactly three elements, okay? So we get back another list object with the elements 10, 20.0 and 30. This is slicing. And of course, um, just uh, what we saw in uh, strings also is for slicing, we can also um, use a third uh, number, which is the step size. So let's say um, I want to go from the first element until let's say the last one, the last one will be element number four. So therefore I have to add one because the upper index is not included. So let's go to index five and Let's do so in steps of two, okay? So let's take only every other element, just like that. And um, I should not write nesting, I should write nested. And then we see I get the empty list, the 20, and the list with the numbers 40 and 50 in it. And now, as we also have learned with the string data type, um, whenever I do slicing and I start at the beginning, instead of simply writing the index zero, I can simply skip it. I can simply leave out the zero. If I um, slice until the end of something, um, what I can also do is I can simply um, skip the upper index, just like that. So what remains is colon colon two, which basically means gives me every other element going from the first to the last, okay? So that's the repetition of slicing. And if you want to reverse a list, what you could do is you could simply go ahead and say colon colon negative one. So go from the beginning to the end in step sizes of negative one. And this will basically flip the order, okay? So this is similar to the uh, reversed um, built-in.
Okay, so reverse is the more formal thing probably to do it. And by using slicing, for slicing, um, the slicing with the step size negative one is kind of a special case. Um, we could also, of course, slice with any other number as we saw. Okay, so um, one last thing in this video to remind you, we saw that before in the video, who am I and how many lists are mutable. Mutable mutability means we can change the elements after we created the list object. So let's go ahead and um, let's um, simply go ahead and exchange maybe the number 10. So how could we do that? We can go ahead and we can say, let's take index one to get to the number one. And if I want to ex uh, change it, let's say into the number 99, I can simply do that by assigning the number 99 to the, f to the second index or so index number one. And if we look at the um, output below here again, now we see that the number 10 has been replaced um, with the number 99. This is not doable for all objects. So there are immutable data types in Python as well. We will also see immutable data types in this chapter seven on sequential data, but the list data type is a mutable data type. Therefore we can change elements, okay? After we created the object, okay? So um, this regards uh, the list data type, um, the basics of the list data type. In the next video, I'm going to um, use the same example, the nested example, and I will talk about uh, the difference between deep and shallow copies, which is also quite interesting. And then we will uh, continue by looking um, into things that list objects can do. So I will see you in the next video.